So, good morning everyone. So, I'm Ludovic Courtes of Inria, France. And, um, well, usually when we talk about code staging, it's very often in the context of generating code with good performance, like we've seen in previous talks. And this talk is about generating code in the context of software deployment, which I think is quite novel. Uh, before going into the details, though, let me first introduce what Gix is. It's actually pronounced Gix, it's kind of weird, but <laughs> that's the way it is. Um, yeah. So Gix is a functional software deployment tool. So for those of you familiar with tools like apt-get or yum, things like that, it's kind of similar, it's, it's like a package manager, so you have a command line interface that allows you to install packages, to remove packages, and so on and so forth. The main difference is that it's transactional. So in these examples, I'm just installing a set of packages in one transaction. And then in a second transaction, I'm removing and installing a package at once. And the good thing is that when you, re re when you realize you've made a mistake, like in this example, you can still roll back, right? And that's pretty convenient as a user. But it doesn't stop here. It goes beyond that, you can actually declare the complete operating system configuration. So this is what we call the Geeks system distribution, Geeks SD. Uh, where, so in this example, I'm just specifying everything about the operating system, user accounts, file systems, services, and so on. How many of you are familiar with list for scheme? I should ask. Yeah, like half of the room, I would say. For, for, for the rest of the room, don't be afraid. I'm sure you'll be familiar with parentheses by the end of the talk. Everything's going to be okay. So once we have this declaration, which is actually scheme code, we can instantiate it. So we can instantiate it in a virtual machine, or we can reconfigure the running system to run this configuration, or we can, again, roll back to a previous instance. So under the hood, this is all functional software deployment, so what does it mean exactly for software deployment to be functional? Well, essentially, it means that we're viewing the build process of packages and operating systems as pure functions that take inputs and produce outputs. And we're viewing the build software, the software artifacts, the binaries, are just a, a persistent graph, you know, an immutable data structure on the file system. So this is all taken from Elko Dolster's work on the Nix package manager, right? And that, that's what we were implementing in Geeks as well. So, uh, under the hood, how does it work in Geeks? Well, for a package, for instance, you would define in an embedded domain-specific language uh, your package recipe, like this one, which specifies every detail about the package. And from there on, so this is an embedded domain-specific language in Scheme. And from there on, we can build that package. And what we get as a result is that weird long file name, which contains a hash here, which uniquely identifies all the dependency that were used to build the package. So how does it work in practice? Well, we have on the right-hand side, we have our scheme code with the, the recipe of that hello package, for instance. Um, that code is going to compile that package recipe to a lower level representation and make remote procedure calls to a build daemon, which in turn is going to actually start processes in isolated environments. And those processes also use scheme. Um, so Guile is the scheme implementation we're using here. And those processes are going to run a scheme program, which in turn is going to invoke, let's say, configure, make, make install, and so forth. So the good thing here is that we have Scheme on the right-hand side and we have Scheme on the left-hand side. So it's Scheme all the way down. So for me as a schemer, it's just wonderful, right? So what this means concretely is that on the right-hand side, we have to generate Scheme code that is going to run eventually on the left-hand side in separate processes. So this is where code staging comes in. So let me first introduce our first attempt at code staging in Geeks. So you've probably heard whispers who pride themselves on having a language that allows them to easily represent an abstract syntax tree. Because Lisp has quotes, which is this uh, tiny apostrophe that we see here. 
And Quart allows you to introduce unevaluated code, right? So you can represent code in Scheme simply by using this apostrophe. So that's what we did initially. So one obvious problem is that we don't want to type all these long file names every time you know, we write a build recipe, so this could not work. So we had to introduce in the generated code a magic global variable like this, which would map labels like query utils to actual file names in that GNU store directory. And then we would provide a, an input and that, that is that mapping of labels to package objects. And finally, we could send that uh, expression to the build daemon, which would eventually allow us to actually build the software. So far, so good, but you can already see that it's not super elegant, right? And uh, worse than that, it's actually error prone, because what if you forget to put that input parameter right at the bottom? Well, it's still going to generate code, right? But eventually, when you try to build the result of that expression, it's not going to work because core utils isn't defined. We don't have a mapping for core utils. So at that point, we start realizing that we need to do something better. And that's when I looked at the related work. And so Nix itself, the package manager, is not very helpful here because it's essentially generating bash snippets by simply concatenating strings that happen to be bash code. So it's not really staging, I would say. Uh, but the, among others, two inspiring uh, pieces of work are uh, code on hygienic macros and scheme and also work on hop. Both of these define something uh, that goes beyond simple quotation in Lisps, and that's 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 the key to, to that problem. So the, the second attempt which I'm presenting here is called G-expression. So essentially a G-expression is uh, an additional quotation construct which we use for staging. So instead of using quote, the apostrophe that we saw before here, we use G-exp, uh, which is like bracket in MetaML. Then we can use ngexp to refer to, for instance, a package. And ngexp is like slice in MetaML, or it's like unquote in Scheme, in a way. But once we have that build expression, we can pass it to our gexp to derivation uh, procedure, which will hand it to the build daemon, so that we can eventually run that code, you know, generate that code and, and run it. So that z checks essentially leads to that generated code. And we have shortcuts. We can use hash tilde for gxp and hash dollar for ngxp. The gexpression itself is system independent, which means we can reuse the same gexpression for different systems. Like if we're building for 64-bit or 32-bit, then it's going to be the same gexpression, and we can reuse it. We made a few extensions so that we could actually accommodate all our needs. So one of them is modules. So in this example, I need a module inside the, the expression, the stage code. So I can specify with imported modules, which says, OK, this module, Geeks Build Utils, is going to be available at runtime when I execute the stage code. And basically, gexpressions allow us to do everything related to code generation. So one example is that we have the initial RAM disk, which uh, boots the system. And this code here, this G expression, defines the code that is going to run when we boot the system, right? when we boot the Linux kernel. And this is scheme again, so it's, it's fairly convenient. There are other examples in the paper, such as system tests, and other use cases that we have in mind. One of them is, for example, that we can use gexpression to remotely evaluate code. And that also does software deployment. So in this example, I would you know, deploy FFmpeg on a remote machine and then evaluate that code, which runs FFmpeg. That's pretty nice. And well, we could do the same with virtual machine, for example, and so on and so forth. One thing I didn't mention is scope preservation, also known as hygiene, which was discussed in the previous talk. Um, well, we, if we look at this example, we have several x variables 
So one of them is at the main stage, let's say, and then we have two axes at the later stage. And obviously we want to preserve uh, scope. So we have a simple alpha renaming phase, which is you know based on, on you know what's commonly documented in the literature, uh, which allows us to distinguish in the generated code the two axes here. There are some limitations. One of them is hygiene versus macro-introduced bindings, because in Scheme and like ML we have macros, so uh, we don't really know how to deal with that. That's an open issue. Another open issue is modules in scope. We cannot really describe what modules a G expression expects to have in scope. Uh, we don't do serialization of non-primitive data types, so that's kind of annoying. Sometimes we have to do it manually. And we don't have cross-stage debugging info like Hop does, which is really convenient. So to summarize, uh, GX ties staging to software deployments. So what this means is that if you have a G expression, when you stage it, you have the guarantee that the expression you're evaluating is going to have access to the software it refers to. I think that's pretty novel. It's used at scale in Geeks and GeeksSD. And it's also something I didn't mention, it's entirely implemented as a scheme macro. There is no compiler magic here, nothing like that, no external tool. It's all a macro, so I think that's one of the nice features with Scheme that we can simply extend the language like this. And this is all free software, so you're welcome to, to have a look at it and provide feedback and ideas. Thank you.